Hey everybody, it's Ron with the Arkansas CW, and today I'm with the director of The Walrus and the Whistleblower, Natalie Babo. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. So, we start off these interviews by letting the director tell us a little bit about their film. So, by all means. The Walrus and the Whistleblower is a dramatic personal tale that um, plays on the backdrop of uh, our fight to deal with the captivity of marine mammals. And so we have a main character who used to be a trainer at a place called Marine Land in Niagara Falls, Canada, who ended up becoming a whistleblower and left his job with allegations of animal abuse and has been embroiled in a uh, dramatic lawsuit and social media fight to basically release a walrus from that facility, but also to end the captivity of marine mammals uh, around the world. So how did you find out about this issue? Well, I uh, have known about this story for a long time. I'm from the area, I'm from Niagara Falls, I was raised there. And I happened to know the main character, Phil Demers, when I was a kid. He was a friend of my brother's. And we ran in very different social groups. We didn't know each other that well, but I did um, know who he was and, and what he was up to after high school. He didn't really know what to do with the rest of his life, which is how he ended up working at Marine Land, which is how I think a lot of people end up working there. It's not an area that has a lot of jobs available to people. And so um, I knew that he was a trainer there, but in 2007, he ended up becoming wildly famous uh, online for his relationship with this walrus named Smooshy. So I started to follow it a little more actively. I was already working in film at the time. Um, but it wasn't until he became a whistleblower that I realized there was a real documentary here to be made because he was a guy who went from being a poster child for the industry to being a poster child to end the industry. And I knew that there was a transformative story to be told, uh, but it took me a long time, to be honest, to try to, to even make the decision to make the film because I knew the main character personally when I was a kid. I had been to Marine Land as a child and all the films that I'd worked on before this were much less personal. You know, they were about places and people that I had no personal connection to at all. So there was, a certain amount of trepidation creatively for me to jump in. Um, but the story just kept going and going and going and eventually it just became bigger than me. I, I had to do it. So this film has a very nice balance between what we see on the news and the main subject's internal personal struggle, which is beyond fascinating. Um, can you tell us about the person what we don't see behind the headlines? Thank you for asking that question, because I think a lot of people, when they hear about this film, they assume that it's just going to be about animals. And while that is certainly the, the main uh, theme of the film is our relationship with animals, what do we do with this captivity situation, much bigger than that really is the human struggle behind the fight to make change and also the absurdity and the human hubris that's involved in getting into a decade long fight about something. And so having this kind of intimate access to the main character, having this personal connection, being from the same town, I was able to access um, a more intimate side to the story that I, I really wanted to put forward because a lot of the films that are in this space that are about animal rights or that are about even marine mammal captivity, um, don't really look at the people behind it all. And that was something I wanted to do to say something different in this case. And the toll that it takes on whistleblowers in any industry uh, is not something I think we talk enough about because we sensationalize what they say, we sensationalize their allegations, but the risk and um, the cost that's associated with doing that um, is something I wanted to touch on emotionally. And thankfully, Phil uh, was generous enough to give me full and transparent access to his inner world. So the Hot Springs Film Festival is a significant festival for documentary filmmakers such as yourself. Um, can you tell us what it's like to be a part of it? It's amazing. It's such uh, an, an honor because when you make a film, you, you're you alone a lot of the time. I mean, of course, you have your team and you have your characters, but the internal struggle, you know, those long days in the edit suite or those long shooting days when you're not sure, are you, do, are you making the right decisions? Is this going to resonate with people? And it's, it's, it can be a very lonely road. And with, with anything that's artistic, 
you, there's a certain kind of torture that we inflict on ourselves voluntarily. <laughs> it's part of the craft. And so when you're finished and you start submitting it to festivals, there's this really awkward, you know, period where you're not sure, are, are people going to pick it up? Are they going to, are they going to see what, what you see? And, uh, and so when it gets picked up by a, a festival like Hot Springs, uh, it's incredible because you realize that you've done something, you've, you're part of a larger conversation, and that other people who are also serious about their craft respect what you've done. So it's, it's huge. So Natalie, for those that are interested about more information on your film, where can they go? Well, our handle is uh, wwbdoc. And the website is walrusandwhistleblower.com. Natalie, we appreciate you and thank you for your time. Thank you.